first day on a new job down here in Greenfield, Missouri. Dad, he's already out going. Not to, not to let me catch up with him or outdo him. I'm fueled up. I just put a new chain on, and I've got, I've got quarks. I always think when I start a new job, I think, uh, I think I need to start out the new chain on my saw, whatever I'm cutting with. So today I'm using a 661C, which that's what I use every day mainly. Hardly ever use the 880s anymore. This saw, we run 404 chain on it, 63 gauge. Now there's times I like to run the 404, and there's times I like to run the 3.8s, and that's a semi-chisel. And this over here is a full chisel. This is my buck saw, so I don't do much cutting with it. I keep it primarily for bucking. But anyway, this job is primarily white oak. A little bit of red oak, a few walnut. Dad cut this off about 40 years ago. And we're back to hit it again now. And I always like bringing Dad down to these jobs, especially in the Greenfield, Missouri area, because I've got a lot of family from Greenfield. It's where my where my mom or grandmother was from originally. And Dad really used to harvest a lot of timber down here. So anytime I buy timber down here, it's it's just got a certain feel to it working in the Greenfield area. It's just kind of I, I don't know. I can't can't describe it. We don't cut a lot of timber down here anymore. I don't. I don't actively hunt or chase timber down here, but whenever I get a call, I always come down here to take a look at it. And uh, sometimes you come across some decent stuff. Most of it's been logged pretty hard down here. Between Dad and, you know, other guys, it's, it's kind of a high high competition area. And like I said, I, I don't come down here and get in, get in pissing matches with guys trying to outbid one another just to get it out from under somebody. That, that don't mean nothing to me. We just want to come down here and do the best job we can, do the best harvest, and, you know, try to get the timber in a little better condition. So, I am going to work myself over here in this direction, let Dad kind of work the grove here. Real good cut, no underbrush, all open. Of course, usually this good white oak timber, or white oak stands are open. This, These are good trees, they're, they're not real big, they're just clean, a lot of good... I guess what you'd call stave material, what we don't sell to the stave mills. So, uh, just uh, good, clean white oak logs. So, he's going on to the next one. I'm fueled up. I'm going to go over here and get to knocking some down myself. Well, that's got me first through my first tank full of gas. These smaller trees, uh, about seven, eight, maybe, by the time you get them cut and topped, which isn't, I mean, it isn't terrible. Usually, usually seems like, you know, you're right in that six range with the, usually the size of timber we're cutting, sometimes less on the bigger trees naturally. But this stuff here is about as small as timbers we cut. This is a, this type of stuff comes down pretty quick, which like I said, these are some decent little white oak, few reds. Uh, like that old tree there, you can see it's got a squirrel hole in it there. We'll just, we'll leave it there for the squirrels, but Decent walnut there. Another decent little walnut there by the fence. We'll get both of those. I think that's, I might have one up there that I'll want to push on with the skitter when we go to cut it. But I wanted to get all this area cut today. I'm going to walk back up here to the truck and refuel. Kind of walk down on this bottom side next to the creek. See what's in here. It looks pretty, pretty scarce. Decent little white oak. There's a few more in there in that little patch. Of course, you can see the treetops there where I worked my way on the upper side, then come down. Fence is just right over there, so. Of course, there's some on the other side of this little branch. Sounds like Dad's been whittling them down pretty good, which I think the biggest concentration of timbers over here where dad's cutting but this is definitely the harder cutting here which is why i wanted to come over here let dad have the stuff with no underbrush because you can see some of those big rocks protruding from the ground there just kind of scattered out here there and everywhere what's here anyway 
some decent trees in there. A lot of times after I buy a track of timber and I get to cutting it, I start second guessing myself. I, and I do it with every track. There's an old stump there from years ago. The other thing I hate about summertime logging is all the spider webs. Hate them. So yeah, there are several more trees to cut down through here yet. I'd like to see what Dad cut off here the first time 40 years ago. Better yet, I'd like to have those to cut again right now. Whew. The problem with cutting around these rocks and these outcroppings is sometimes your chain gets into the rock and that's not good for anything not good for anything at all i was going along there born a white oak out i went to make my back cut and she just wouldn't cut just like she was spinning her wheels and I don't know if there was just a little rock grown into the tree or what, but we hit it. And that's a, that's a pain. I know a lot of guys can sharpen those, re-sharpen those chains where they can get the, get that out of them. They'll, they'll file the dogs down to the drags and sharpen them and sharpen them. When I went to cutting school in Missouri for the cutting classes, that's one thing Joe Glenn talked about was, uh, you know, some of the filing and chainsaw stuff, which you take a old timer like him that's been around the block, he uh, he can get those things good as new with a little bit of work. I never have been able to, to get them right. It seems like every time I get to work on a chain like that, we uh, it just never I never I never can get it to cut straight after that. I I take off too much somewhere, not enough somewhere else. So it's uh. I'm just not, I'm not a good sharpener. I mean, I can touch them up with a file, you know, from just when they need sharpen. But as far as uh, when you hit something like a rock or metal or something like that, I never can get them to cut right again. So we just, uh, I mean, we've got a, a barrel full of old saw chain. But oh, Dad said he, he was on his last tank anyway, and I think that tank's getting close to being empty. We got a pretty good start on it. It's supposed to be hot again today, back up in the 90s, and the humidity, we can already tell it right now. Of course, I'm just, I'm soaking wet, just sweat's pouring out of me, and it is dad too, and I'm going to go put my saw on the truck. I'll drive down there to where dad's at. That way he don't have to walk, and I'll, I'll pack his saw out for him, because I know he's getting wore down too. This whole hot weather's hard on us all hard on us all but he's uh i've been hearing him man he's been trees just been crashing one right after another dad's still got a lot to go in him i wish i'd have been a uh, youtube in about 15 years ago i really do he he was a mountain of a man when when i first started cutting logs full time that's when he was still lugging around the 880s that's that's all we knew was 880s i didn't I thought a 660 or an 066 at the time was a small saw because I, I grew up with 084s, 088s, 880s, and that's that was logging right there. And now I go to pick one of them up and I feel like a weenie. Used to, I wheeled those things around all day and I thought I was a pretty good man, but I'm not much of a man anymore. He just got them laying everywhere. Everywhere. Tree after tree. Here he comes right here. <clears throat> Job. Good red oak, good white oak, good size, tall trees, good cutting weather. It's supposed to be a high of about 75 degrees today. Got some overcast, a little bit of wind. 
remnants of tropical storm Barry starting to blow in here to southwest Missouri. Dad's hung up. We'll get him, get him free. Kenny's down here cut today. I've been demoted to skitter driver. This is a fun timber to cut. It's open as it is. Get over here and get Dad out. size trees. These are about 18 inch diameter trees. About the size of stuff I really like to cut. For one, they, they cut pretty quick. The quality is usually pretty good. They got some height to it for your first one. That's pretty cool. And for Southwest Missouri, this is, this is pretty average temper size height. After going back east, we'll see a little bit back east of what guys got back there. It just blows my mind how tall the timber is. We don't have that here. Most of our timber is short body. Canopy's out pretty quick. Now we'll get into some tall stuff every now and then, but generally, this is pretty average, pretty common stuff. It's good quality though, this stuff here is. I heard Dad and Kenny talking this morning. They took this 32 years ago, the last time Dad was here. When we left work Saturday, we kind of took a stroll back to the south here down the gravel road. Dad was showing me jobs he'd cut in the years past. He, he used to cut a lot of timber down here. And we went by a job site that he cut probably about then, 35, 40 years ago. And the timber had grown back, and he said it was just as big now as it was when he cut it then. That's how good it's grown back. And that goes on something I, I love to kind of brag about. I, I try not to brag on ourselves too often, but just timber selection, timber management. Just trying, trying to harvest what needs to be harvested, just like this track here. There is a lot of timber here. In the years to come, there's going to be timber harvested out of here for years and years. But it all comes down to harvesting what needs to come out. Being very selective. Go over here and get a few of these.
can do everything. to our channel for all of our latest videos.